I'm trying to do a job here really quick and that is, sorry, I'm pointing you in the sun. Is that better? Now the sun is in my eyes. It's just gone half past eight in the morning and I'm trying to get my heifers moved here. And it's not going so well because, well, it's for a good reason. Um, they're in our big hill here and they're in it a long time. They're in since we cut the bales off it, but the field is that big that the grass is kind of outgrowing them at the minute. But I do want to move them. I was contemplating putting the cows over here. The ground is so dry and everything's in such good nick. I kind of bowed out of it because I can keep my heifers out for a good while. Well into November if I can. Our calves will also be out for nearly that length as well. But if you come in here you can see we have a lot of grass. When it does rain, which it will rain soon, this will be the field that get wettest quicker. Especially over on the far side because this was a boggy kind of a spot over there especially anyhow. So to get them in here let them graze this for a week. 10 days, maybe even more. We'll work wonders, let them graze it out completely. So I'm just tapping the back of the box here. Seems to be working. So why I'm doing that is it replicates a bucket or a bucket being tapped again a trot, which may have meal in it. And meal is definitely their best friend. So the heifers are just here, if I walk over this direction, they'll follow me and then they'll see the gate. Here we are, here, 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 hey, hey, here, I'm here, don't run by. There's always one that doesn't come. Every pack of heifers we've ever had, we've always had at least one dominant heifer and we've always had one like that there too. She's the more acquisitive one. That's not just going to fall for everything you go to do. So that there is like a Christmas dinner to them. The one thing I didn't mention on the channel is we have 14 heifers. We did have 16 heifers. Um, I don't know why I held up two fingers. It made no sense whatsoever. But I sold two heifers back probably about two months ago, three months ago. But 14 heifers is plenty for me. 10, 12 heifers is plenty for me. If all were in calf and all is good with them, that's plenty for me. They're all starting to make little elders now because most of these heifers are calving in late January and February. You can see how close Ruby looks to Bo now at home. Pretty much identical. I just hope it's not as moody. Bo, Bo's moody. Right, so that's some sort. At least they'll graze that out now when the weather's dry and we'll not do any harm to this field. I'm going to sort out these fences when we get home. So that's the next job. Right, so a little job we're going to do now. I have to bring two cows out that's in this shed that I held back this morning that we're going to sell. This time of year, Especially when it's raining so heavy now. It's raining a lot now. In the last 24 hours we've had a lot of rain. I'm still hoping I can get cows out for another six, five, six plus one days. No, that's because that'll get me through to next Monday. Today is Tuesday and we have a wedding this weekend. I don't want to put them in this weekend because of that. Monday even preferably because Sunday might be a bit tender. Um, so that's the kind of plan. But around this time of year, we do sell off some cows. We have a lot of heifers coming in. So I like to start tinning out cows from now on, cows that we don't want to keep. So we have a couple of cows here. We have to get them up in the crush here before our buyer comes and get the collars taken off them for starters. So I'm going to get them out here first. I think I've all set up and up into the crush. I didn't get time to actually move the camera because they run that quick for the crush. Well, that used to go in and out of it. 861 for starters. She's fine out when she's in the field. Going to the power requires a lamb. But when you put her in the shed, she has two bad habits. The first one is that she runs up and down. She never quits walking around, just like she's doing now. She can never relax. She's always up and down and kind of on edge. My girls, I'm kind of teaching them now how to do one of the most important things in the farm, and that is to walk through cattle when they're in the sheds to always walk through them. We go through them twice a day just to check for things like mistatus and also check for cows that are starting to spring up to calve as well. Just general eyes on. Now when we do that, the cows are quiet. You've seen that in our other videos. We can walk through them. You can pet most of them. They'll come up to you and they'll pet you if you don't watch your back. But when they're in, I have a fear that you could toss them. She doesn't purposely toss anybody, but she can run into a person. She can shove again you. You just have to be wary about her. She could even fall in a statue run sometimes that hard. But our second reason, and one of the real reasons why I'm getting rid of her, is she doesn't lay up in the cubicles. She lays on the slats. And she's the only cow we've had doing that in a long, long time. And I don't like cows laying on slats. Just lovely, clean cubicles. And it's hateful when you come out and an animal's laying at the slats. And she'll also lay across the feeding barrier. So cows nearly have to walk on her 
to get feeding. We tried tying her up in the cubicles at Everton and nothing worked. She's just one of those edgy animals you can see even there. She's constantly thinking of doing something. Compared to this big tame Egypt here, which she could get up on her back and ride the Grand National. Now she is a six calver and I've noticed the last two lactations her performance has been quite poor. Um, she seems to put more on her back than she does on her elder. She's a lovely big frame of a cow as you can see there, much bigger than this one here behind. She's actually quite a small cow, probably the smallest in her herd. So she's going just purely down to production. But anyway, I want to get back to the job in hand, get these collars off because they're not going anywhere and they'll be reprogrammed and put onto our heifers. There we go. So what happens here is with these collars is that you loosen off the strap and underneath there we have a QR code or whatever you call them things and we have a code here for this collar. So when I go into the system I'll be fit to pull out that code, it'll tell me what cow it was on and all I have to do is edit the details, put the new tag number to match this um, collar and it'll be as simple as that. I'll show all that being done whenever we're putting on the heifers. A lot of people ask me on the channel, Adrian, you never give any update on how you found the collars after you put them on earlier on this year. There was a reason for that. I couldn't really give you much of an update until we've used them for quite a while because these things, you can't give uh, any kind of a proper, not say review, but you can't give a proper opinion after a month or two months because it's not going to really tell you anything. It's definitely not going to really educate anybody else if they are thinking about buying something similar and you need to give time to get a whole breeding season over and a whole grazing season, hard to believe, over as well before I can kind of give you a bit of a verdict on what I think so far and it's mixed, good and there's, well, not bad but there's things you need to understand as well when you put this in because it's not a flick of the switch and it's going to do everything for you, that's simply not how they work. So these things here, if you're not from the farming background, the best way to explain them is it's like a Fitbit. Humans will use it to track how many steps to take, burn off calories, stuff like that. But for a cow, we use it kind of the same, but what we want out of it is much different. We're not interested in how much calories they burn. We're more interested in what's actually happening with them. So I've done a video on this before when we fitted them. You can go back and watch that. I'll put a link in the description when we got them all fitted. So I'm not going to repeat all of that stuff, but breeding season, to put it really, really simple, we had a great breeding season this year. One of the best ones we've had. In my probably time taking over the farm. Let's weather us down to these. Yes, I think so. Weather as well, a bit of luck, I don't know. There probably is a heap of that stuff combined. But I'm not talking about just this brand. There's loads of brands out there and they're all equally good at what they do. For me, I found um, timing is very important. Yes, you said it. The system will pick up when cows are coming in heat in the first six hours, it'll pick them up. That's when they'll come online and let me know. And I found when I'd be looking at them in that first six, seven, eight hours, you wouldn't see any signs of a lot of them being a bull. And some of them were, some of them were very, very easy to see, but a majority of them wasn't. And what would happen there is I would find that would say happen in the morning when you're milking. And then the following evening when you're bringing in the cows, then you would see them, which would put them a lot later in that heat cycle, which to me then would mean that probably the next morning, because we don't well, I don't yet at the moment, I don't AI the cows myself. I have a man that comes and does that. And he normally comes from early morning up until about two o'clock in the evening. So I would have left that cow till the following morning. But this time, I was doing them the morning before. On that first six, seven hours before I was actually physically seeing her. And I found the conception rate definitely, definitely improved by getting them done much, much earlier. I think out of 60, 66 served, we had eight repeats. Three of those repeats was our heifers. We had one heifer repeated twice and another heifer repeated once. I think I'm right on that, but if I'm not, I'm only out by one or two and that's it. So I'm more than happy with that. My dad used to go over to the other farm and check the heifers and he'd go and he'd walk through the cows every morning even checking them. And he would spot cows in the middle of the day they were bullying. It can't be explained how important that is to have someone to do that. Unfortunately, my dad isn't able to do that no more and he's irreplaceable, but this here and these have turned into a kind of like a second set of eyes and now you have to still use your common sense too. For instance, if 
the cows broke through a fence or they had a bit of a gallop around a field or something happened that spooked the cows or if you didn't give them enough of grass and they were on edge and they were moving around a lot. In the morning you could have ten cows in heat. Now, the one thing you will notice is the stars from one to five. Five being a prime time for serving and a one being, well, look at her because there's a possibility she's probably not in heat at all. And you'll find that. That has happened a few times. And it's just common knowledge. You can look, see how long she was done before. You can physically have a look at the cow yourself and manage that. Uh, it's the very same when it comes to health monitoring. So there's an index, like a graph of 10. One being really poor, 10 being in full health. And it will notify me if cows drop a decimal. So if it drops down to 9, drops down to 8, I'll have a list every morning telling me cows just to keep a little bit of an eye on. So them cows are generally fine. I've seen a shower of rain where cows will go and stand at the back of the hedge. This time of year, for instance, I see a lot of cows coming in for health checks because they're standing at the back of the hedge for shelter and they're not as active. And it cops that. But we did have a cow, I did share it on Instagram, where she took a chill and I knew she dropped from an 8 to a 3, which is more urgent. So we put her in and treated her and I put it up on an Instagram story. I think I shared a post every single day showing her graft and showing her slate improvement all the time. So the first night she came in and she kept her inside because it was quite cold. But we put her out the next day and I wasn't sure whether she was eating enough or not. But I was able to look at it and it was able to tell me how long she was eating for, how many hours she was eating for, how active she was. And that's a hell of a help. So I shared that each day and you could see the little improvement. She went from a four, then she went to a six, then she went to an eight, and eventually four or five days she was back to full health. Tail paint is another great option. If you want to do tail paint, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Or using the scratch cards or whatever it is you use, there's nothing wrong with that at all. A bit of advice I'd personally give you myself. Do what I've done. Go around different farmers and ask different farmers what they think and look at different systems on different farms and get as much information as you can. Not just from me or wherever else it is you follow or wherever it is, social media or in the pub at night. Ask a good few people and that will help you make your decision.
So Nicole is our new employee on. She is new employee to milking. She's been working on the farm quite a long time at this stage. But they're milking now, how long are you going to make Two weeks? Almost three weeks now. It's 21 when I took over and it's a long time ago when my dad used to make. That was the only other person ever make on this farm. And now we have a third generation. It's a very nice thing. Would I retire now or? Somehow I feel I'm not just done yet. But it's great to have someone trained in. Now Nicole is by far the tallest of the girls. You probably worked that out. And she makes them known or makes that known. The other girl is a little bit smaller yet. Although you're not the oldest. She's still the tallest. And we're gonna give them a little bit longer yet, but all of them will do their hand at working at this here. But you never know, it's always good to have backup. And that's the way I look at it. It lays the pressure on me as well. And you enjoy it, don't you? Yeah. One thing I would love to add to this pile, I might do someday, is to add an auto opening gate to both ends, because you go down at the very bottom end, you have to walk the whole way up to open the gate. I know, it might sound lazy, but every couple of steps, is less on your legs but I don't have to at the minute because I do have an auto opening gate and Sophia opens and closes the gates for us as we're making. <laughs> How lazy do you get? But look at it, it's there, use it. Come on, come on, come on. If you haven't seen Moudini in a while, so that's Moudini. And here is Bo right behind her. So the two that know each other all is stick together. If you follow the channel, we're born about two weeks, I think, in between. There's about two weeks in between them. And they were raised in the same house and they were brought up together. So they never leave each other's side. They're all is beside each other. Pure mischief, both of them. So we're starting to kind of wind down now at Milken. Cows are starting to fall down rapidly on mixed supply, which I kind of understand. The weather condition is very good, but a lot of these cows are calving in January um, and February, and them kind of cows, they're starting to dwindle off now. And we won't find to be drying off cows in a few weeks anyway, and we might have a little bit of a break around Christmas time. Otherwise, now we race through them fairly quickly this time of year now. Come on. Come on. So, we're just having a conversation here. You have a favourite cow, have you? Yeah. Um, five, six, on this side. And she doesn't move. And she keeps her legs like this. Well, you can put it on her easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You do get a couple of masters too. A couple of sprayers the cough and poo at the one time. And the cough projects it further out. And if you weren't watching what you're doing, I don't think you'd be caught yet, have you? Well, yeah. It's common. It's common.
and my job is closing in the case. Job done. So it's the next day, I'm just after coming back, I'm just having a walk around here, just checking on a few fences and things. But however, the cows just closed in, the kids just dropped to school. You can see the amount of work the girls actually do for me. And a lot of people have asked me in the videos, how helpful is it to me? And as you can see there, it's seriously helpful to me. You mightn't see the girls that often on the videos, but that doesn't mean they're not working here on the farm because they are. They are young ladies now, they're not young girls anymore. Well, my eldest is soon turning 16 and my twins, Nicole and Sophia, will be turning 15 all at the one time. In case you didn't know, we have Irish triplets. Our three eldest girls technically were born within the one year, so that's classed as Irish triplets. True Calvin, man, one bouncing castle does the whole thing. I also have two other daughters. I have five daughters altogether. Saoirse being three and Elena being 10. Yesterday I celebrated my birthday, turned 32 again. My wife will always ask me, my kids will always ask me, what do you want for your birthday? And truly, being 100% honest about it, nothing. I always say the same thing, absolutely nothing, because I've been able to make that video yesterday and I've been already editing some of it and looking back, it brings a smile to my face. And they are the things in life that truly do make you happy. Having the opportunity of having your kids here with you, or family, whatever it is, working here alongside you, everybody having the crack and just getting on with things. Everybody knows their jobs and it's nice. Probably brings a true emphasis of the word family farm. Well, that's what it means to me anyway. Just being able to spend time with my family and we're all working together. And there's not many occupations out there where you get a chance to do that. And that won't always be the case because my three eldest girls will be going off to college in only a short few years. But the next two will be coming along and they'll be starting to make an appearance on the camera. I don't know what any of my daughters want to do in life yet. They haven't made that decision and they'll make that decision themselves. But I hope the little bit of experience here on the farm, like a little bit of manual labour, responsibility and being able to work on your own initiative are kind of some of the skills you learn on working on a farm. And I'm hoping whatever they choose to do in life, That'll benefit to them, that'll stand to them later on in life. We're well, going to be very busy over the next few days. Our grazing season is coming sharply to an end. It has been an absolutely brilliant end to the year. Um, the best we've seen in a long time and it's been really wanted because it has lifted people's spirits and has allowed cows to stay out for the next couple of weeks compared to what we went through in the last few years. And that has been a hell of a weight off people's shoulders. But grass, like in a lot of farms now, has stopped growing. It's cold at night and it's just normal for the time of year. So cows will inevitably be going in in the next few days. We're already getting the sheds ready now. Quite a bit of welding and fabricating to do just to fix a few things in the sheds. We're getting drinkers and plumbing and things sorted as well. And equipment ready as well for feeding. So that is all coming up now very shortly. We're right in the middle of doing that as we speak. Myself and Sinead have a wedding this weekend and we're not hiring in anybody to do the milking for us. Nicole is doing the milking. Not on her own. My brother's going to oversee and he's going to just give her a little bit of a hand. But she's going to do the majority of the work she wants to do it. She's mad to get doing it, and that'll be our first time without Dad standing watching over our shoulders. Right, let's go and do something else.